Pinterest and I am Malika Ramsey. This week we discussed the rate of suicide in our country, not only our country, but we also talk about it as it relates to uh, where Guyana ranks regarding suicide in the Caribbean. Of course, to discuss that with me is leader of the People's National Congress Reform and leader of the opposition, Mr. David Granger. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much, Malika. Mr. Grinch is someone who believes in people and he believes in securing human resources. And if we continue to lose our uh, human resources, uh, it definitely does not make good for development of our country. Now, Mr. Grinch, first off, uh, according to the World Health Organization, that's WHO, Guyana has been listed in the top 10 most suicidal countries in the Caribbean. Do you believe that that listing, or I should say that position, makes suicide in Guyana uh, alarming? It is alarming. It is um, a severe loss of human resources. Um, many of the persons uh, who commit suicide uh, rob the country of um, their useful contribution. And it is an indicator that something seriously wrong in Guyanese society. So it is abnormal and we're really deeply concerned because uh, it, this is not an act of God, this is not force majeure, this is something that is preventable. And we feel that the government itself has to show leadership okay. in preventing this epidemic of suicides. I think hardly a week passes now okay. in Guyana that we don't hear um, of some suicide. So some time ago, at least a decade ago, the alarm was raised and I think the government made some efforts to set up something called the National Suicide Prevention Committee. But the government sets up a lot of, uh, sets up a lot of committees, but they don't seem to work. So the government realized that something was wrong. I think a person called Sri Prakash Gosai was actually mm -hmm. recruited into the uh, office of the president to deal with uh, suicide. And uh, of course he died, and nobody could tell what has happened to the National Suicide Prevention Committee, because certainly suicide is not being prevented, mm -hmm. it is still out of control. But it's a very complex phenomenon, a complex disease, and I don't think there's been enough research to determine why it is so prevalent in Guyana, and what could be done to maybe curtail it. You could never really eradicate the, the the, the disease, uh, the threat of the disease, but uh, we don't see any efforts being made to curtail it. Now, some studies have shown that young persons are more likely to commit suicide than older persons. If you believe that is true, uh, do you think that Guyana's economic crisis in terms of the high poverty rate contributes to that? Because I know recently you spoke about young persons and employment, the fact that there are no jobs. Do you believe that that in any way contributes to suicide? Well, there are several reasons why people commit suicide. And um, it is not true that necessarily poor people um, or persons affected by poverty are more susceptible or more likely to commit suicide. But generally speaking, I think the conditions of life, the quality of life, in Guyana is a major, our major contributory factor um, because I think this triggers depression, this triggers mental illness and it um, triggers certain crimes. Um, we are particularly interested in the crime because sometimes the crime of suicide seems linked to um, some sort of lover's pact or some quarrel or sometimes an agreement that maybe the male, usually the male, um, kills the female and then kills himself, as if they had some sort of agreement. You know, if the mm -hmm. parents don't want um, them to marry, they feel they would be united in some other world. And um, that is one of the factors. But generally speaking, I would agree that poverty linked with certain social conditions uh, uh, created the precondition for, um, for suicide to be prevalent in Guyana. Right, I'm going to come back to the economic issues in a bit, but I've also read somewhere that in Guyana, the highest, uh, the, the, the regions where the suicide rates, uh, the rate, suicide rate is the highest are uh, region two, which is Pomeroon, Supernau, and region six, East Barbies, Quarantine. In your experience, 
do you believe that th that is so? Is that factual? It is factual, and this is the same literature that, you know, there has been some analysis, and uh, it's difficult to tell why. I think even if you look at the East Babis Quarantine Region, Region 6, it is not widespread, but there are certain areas where there's a high incidence of, of, uh, of suicide. And it is my recollection that one such area is uh, Blackbush Polder. Uh, but there are other areas uh, which have been affected. And I can only suggest that because uh, in the East Babis Quarantine Region, the Blackbush Polder is, is more or less like an enclave. It is not part of the highway, it's not part of the, the, that ribbon development along the, the coast. It is set um, a little way inland, so it is relatively remote and you don't have the sort of continuous interaction with the other elements of uh, quarantine society. That might be a factor. It is a farming society, farming community as well. It's not commercial, business oriented. Uh, on the Escobar coast, um, you, you have several um, isolated areas. As you know, the coast is like a long ribbon, and some of the communities are not um, linked directly with, um, with other communities. There the, is a rice farming area, largely, and you see some clusters. So there might be some uh, isolation, um, there might be some remoteness, and that might be a contributory factor. The point is, Malika, that at this point in time in Guyana, there must be more careful research. Mm -hmm. There must be some determination at the level of the central government about causation, mm -hmm. what is causing this, this problem, before we can plan our solutions. And unless you do research, and unless you collect data, and unless you analyze these data, you will not be able to to provide a remedy, and this is what is baffling. We don't want to jump to conclusions about area, about ethnicity, about age group, although the trends are clear, okay. but it might be misleading um, because sometimes even mature men hmm. might be in debt, and uh, I know that in other countries, people who fall into debt uh, because of uh, you know, they took loans for agriculture and other purposes, and if they have a failed crop, it means they can't repay the loans and they, they would kill themselves. And some of those uh, deaths in Guyana are the result of indebtedness. Yes. So um, we need to look at causation, and I think the government is best placed to revive the work of the National Suicide Prevention Committee, but employ researchers who could, of course you can't um, interview somebody who's committed suicide, um, but you can interview people who have been, um, who have attempted to commit suicide and who have been prevented from committing suicide. And also you can analyze data um, where some suicides were faked, mm -hmm. some persons were killed, and um, some arrangements were made to create the impression that they actually commit suicide when it was in murder. You know, you see a man hanging, you say, oh, he hung himself, but when you examine what happened, you know, you discover that he couldn't possibly have hung himself, but somebody hung his body and put it there. As, as far as you know, and you spoke about the committee a minute ago, and you spoke about it in, in a response, a previous response, the, the committee that government would have set up. As far as you know, what would have probably been some of the causes for the collapse of that and uh, can we fall, can it be resuscitated? How easily would it be for that to be resuscitated? My recollection is that a large proportion of the membership of that committee was uh, taken from the government uh, ministries okay. and I think it's always a danger because um, the government officials are busy and secondly they're not impartial. Mm -hmm. So it is uh, a double loss. Because they're busy, the meetings tend to be infrequent. And because they're not imp uh, impartial, the, the, the outcome or the deliberations tend to be biased one way or the other. So we are at a situation, we are at a position now in Ghana in which we have not been doing enough. The government has not been doing enough to eradicate this, this, this scourge of um, suicide. 
And um, it is something that calls for academics, it calls for sociologists, it calls for maybe medical practitioners, um, psychiatrists, who could analyze the phenomenon and recommend solutions. But that hasn't happened. I'm happy you mentioned psychiatrists and sociologists. And uh, we spoke about young persons probably uh, committing suicide, linking it to the economic uh, issues that we currently face. But I'm asking this. In your opinion, what makes a 13, 14, 15, or 16-year-old commit suicide? And I'm asking too because the, I think the most recent case of suicide in Guyana is that of a 16-year-old Sunil Dairam uh, in, in August month uh, from Region 6, incidentally. What makes a, a teen, or even a person, an adolescent, younger than a teen, commit suicide? Well, you're asking me the question we, should ask, we can ask a researcher. Okay. Because, um, as I said, once a person's committed suicide, you can't interview that person anymore. But the family may give um, some indication whether the person was depressed. Uh, we know from our reading that uh, sometimes a child may fail exams, or that child may feel he or she is disappointed um, parents, and therefore may commit suicide. There's so many motives. Um, in one case, you know, a jealous husband may kill his wife and commit suicide. Um, in another case, a child might, um, for example, there was once a case of a child attending the charity secondary school, uh, probably a child of indigenous um, heritage or indigenous descent, um, who came out from the river and was living at charity and committed suicide. And. Um, it may be because of some domestic problem at home. It may be because of unfulfilled ambitions. It may be because he or she is facing a situation and, uh, to which they see no resolution. There's no way of resolving this conflict. And that is why it is very likely that we may have to examine what I would say is mental illness. Okay. Um, because the person may just have a completely different way of resolving contradictions. For example, people want to live, normally people want to live and mm -hmm. have a good life, have a good time. So it is completely the opposite when you want not to live. <laughs> and um, and you sometimes the suicidal person undergoes tremendous suffering because when we make jokes about drinking these uh, poisonous insect, this insecticide and so on. The deaths could be har very harrowing because people do not die instantaneously. They take a long time to die and they undergo tremendous pain and suffering. So what would make a person uh, undergo that pain um, when of course it's pleasurable to live? And that is the type of question that we have to ask because that person now has a different logic, a different way of saying, look, it is better for me to suffer. Uh, or maybe the suffering that I will undergo in ending my life is less severe than the suffering I will undergo if I remain alive. So we do not know the answers, but I think Dr. Frank Beckles, who perhaps is one of the best known psychiatrists in this country, has done studies. Um, there was a landmark study, I think, um, several years ago, and maybe that could be the, the, the springboard to other forms of research. You did mention the, the, the insecticides, the, the use of it, and I'm happy that you did that because I, the family and medical education specialist, Dr. Joan Liverpool, who recently visited Guyana, uh, she did some research and she also discovered that one of the problems that we face is that it's very easy for persons to access these uh, poisonous substances, like as you said earlier, like the insecticides. Can we can we stop that? Do you feel that uh, uh, maybe a public education campaign could probably help with that, or or do you believe that if someone wants to commit suicide, there is no stopping them? Well, you're quite right because there's so many various means um, people can use. Um, Maybe in farming areas, it is easy to get access to herbicides and pesticides. And that is why it's frequent, it frequently used, because it's in a bottle there on the shelf and you pick it up and drink it. But in other circumstances, um, people can jump off a bridge. 
Um, people drown themselves, this has happened in, in countries all around the world. You can throw yourself on a car um, and you could maybe, you know, like some Japanese uh, samurai warrior, you can, you know, decot yourself. But there's so many means. You can get a, a pistol or put it to your head and, and squeeze the trigger. So there are many means for a determined person to end his or her life. And uh, simply by, you know, making access to, to chemicals more difficult would not put an end to the efforts of a determined suicidal person. So I would say that um, we need to go beyond the actual means people use okay. and look at the motive that people have and try to remove the motivation. For example, as I said, you know, it could be that uh, there is some social factor which um, convinces people that they should uh, get out of this world. That one social factor could be extreme poverty, one could be indebtedness, one could be a marital breakdown. And it is quite uh, surprising, or maybe it shouldn't be surprising, the number of suicides that occur within the household. Um, in the sense of people reacting to an incident or a situation within the household. For example, in Mahaika, um, in August, I think, this year, we had a situation in which a husband literally battered, hammered his wife to death and then committed suicide. Well, he's a criminal. He's a criminal. And uh, if he intended to kill his wife because he felt she was unfaithful, that is one matter, but you know, we obviously have to put his suicide in a, in a class that is different from a student who is frustrated or who is depressed at having poor exam results and kills himself. One might be, the latter case might be one of, of um, I would say, mental illness. Um, but in the case of the husband who batters his wife and kills himself, um, it, it might be because the man is just a criminal. And there was another case, I think, brought before um, a, a judge quite recently in which a man apparently made an agreement with the woman that they'd both end their lives and <laughs> he killed her <laughs> and then refused to kill himself. You know, so, well, of course, he's not a, that's not a suicide, but he used the promise of suicide to bring about the death of his so-called lover. So it is very um, dangerous to proceed along this line without doing deeper research, um, because we don't really know what the motivation was in, in, in these cases. Bruno, we live in an era where uh, a whole lot of people in society believe that the family unit has somewhat collapsed. Do you believe that if we somehow try to strengthen the family unit, or some people refer to it as an institution, do you believe that would also, in a sense, help persons, to help to deter persons who may be thinking along the lines of suicide? Well, <laughs> again, it is speculative. And okay. the answer might not be um, easy because sometimes suicides occur in well-structured families. Mm -hmm. um, quite obviously, there might be some element or some factor within that family to uh, persuade somebody to kill himself or herself. Um, again, there might be a family, but there might be some dispute over property, over um, infidelity, or, or, or there might be some other cause. But the family is there. Husband, wife, children, you know, there's a home. Um, but something goes wrong, and you see the husband burns down the house, stabs the children, tries to kill himself. So it's not one size fits all. Okay. There are lots of motivations, lots of reasons why people kill themselves, but in, in, a, in a, I don't want to use the word good, but in a, an orderly family, um, vigilant parents or vigilant seniors may detect that um, something is wrong with a sibling or with a child and would be able to say, oh, what's the problem? I noticed for the last two days you seem very depressed. What are you worried about? Mm -hmm. And 
if the person feels that he or she will get sympathetic counsel, you know, from his sibling or from his parents, he might say, well, mom is my exam grades, or mom, I, you know, is my girlfriend. And if the family is a sympathetic one, um, that person may be told, well, look, um, don't worry about the grades, you know, we know that you, we weren't able to buy you the books or something, but we've gotten some money, we buy you the school books, we show your grades are going to be improved. Give them encouragement so that they don't feel depressed. If, for example, if the parents were abusive, if the child was threatened and beaten because he got bad grades, and of course the child fails and doesn't want to come home and you know jumps in a canal or something like that, um, well then perhaps in a case like that we can have an intervention which says, well, which help the child to, to, um, to get access to wiser counsel because the child may be performing badly because of some emotional disturbance, you know. Mm -hmm. So we, again, everything comes back to causation. We need to get to the causes. All right. In, in, in saying that it comes back to causation, over the years we've seen uh, these massive PR campaigns, uh, whether it be for uh, HIV and AIDS, road safety, diabetes, or any other health situation. We've seen these massive PR campaigns being launched to encourage persons who are suffering from these diseases, or, or, or in, in the case of road safety, who are affected, telling you what to do and what you should not do. Do you believe that a, a campaign against uh, suicide would help a, a PR campaign against suicide? Well, you're quite right, because suicide is an epidemic now in Guyana. If as many people as died from suicide were being killed on the roads, you know, we'd all be up in arms calling for, for better enforcement. Um, so I would say yes, um, there needs to be um, a response because what is happening now is of epidemic proportions. And uh, we can't continue like this. Too many young people are losing their lives. So I would say there, there needs to be some, some cohere, cohesive coherent response, because right now maybe we should have, should, just like in the AIDS campaign you mentioned, we should embark maybe on an information, a public information campaign, um, so that we become more alert, we can look for the, for the indicators, yeah. um, uh, maybe a person wanders off on her own from the group, moody, depressed, mm -hmm. uncommunicative, and maybe he or she is hoping to reach out to someone to tell the person, you know, what the problem is, or she hopes that that person will reach out to, but it doesn't happen. And we miss the signs, and as a result of that, they say, well, what's happened to so-and-so? Oh, okay, uh, she killed herself this morning. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a very um, sad song about, um, I think it's, uh, there's an American folk song about it, and, you know, that, People just jump off bridges and uh, sometimes jump, uh, throw themselves on the train or something. You know, um, and uh, we don't know the reason. So maybe if we have a community in which people um, could pick up the science and people could be more communicative, we could maybe overcome the problem too. Okay. Before I, I, I ask you finally about uh, APNU's role, I, this is probably a tricky one. Should, should a person who attempts to commit suicide and of course fail at the attempt, should they be incarcerated or somehow punished? It, is it a crime? Uh, it is, I think, regarded as a crime. And as I said, um, we need to maybe reform the law. I would agree with you that the person need not to be criminalized, the person probably needs medical attention. The person may be mentally unstable, the person may be living in depressed conditions. For example, as I said, you know, a farmer who uh, is indebted, he, he borrows money to get one rice crop, and the crop fails because of flooding or drought, um, uh, or insect infestation, borrows more money maybe to hoping that the second crop will be able to pay off for the first and then there's a second failure because the flood continues 
and he doesn't know where to turn. You know, nobody would lend him any more money. He's got wife and children to feed. And he says, the only way out is to end my own life. Um, and that is why I am surprised that people have not noticed that Black Bushpool is an agricultural area, and okay. a lot of uh, the deaths did occur there. And many of the deaths occur in rural areas. Again, they might be farming areas. So we need to look at causation. And um, I do believe that uh, a lot more work needs to be done. No, it is hard for, it is difficult for non-governmental organizations or civil society to undertake research at this scale. And the government has to take the lead. The government has to show leadership because this is a national epidemic. Mm -hmm. And um, not only are we losing too many lives, but we are not implementing measures which prevent um, the loss of life. You mentioned just an information campaign. But it is my view that that would not be enough. It is necessary to have an information campaign to alert other members of the society, other members of com the community, to look out for certain um, uh, signs. Mm -hmm. You know, if a child is being bullied, um, you know, they may be a strong child in class, or two or three children, sometimes they form these little gangs, you know. Um, not gangs in, of course, the criminal sense, yeah. but you know, they mm -hmm. club together, maybe they live in the same community or the same, in a neighborhood, and they call themselves a gang, you know. And they would bully people, weaker people, that's what gangs do. They bully weaker people. And as a result of that, you know, people don't want to come to school, or they don't want to be beaten, and um, sometimes the beating is so bad that they want to end their own lives. So we need to do a lot more research to find what the causes are. And, and then I think we can talk about changing laws. But certainly I don't believe that it should be criminalized. Okay. It needs to be understood better. And right now in Guyana, we, we have the unfortunate reputation of being told we have the highest per capita uh, suicide rate on the continent or in the Caribbean. Um, and I do not believe that we are responding to the epidemic the way we should. The government, again, I, I say again, has to show leadership, and uh, changing the laws wouldn't help. Okay. Um, because if you're dead, it doesn't matter if you you could, you know you guilty or not guilty. You know, um, we have to look at the motivation, see why people want to end their lives in the first place. You know, so. Finally, in the final moments of this uh, program, sir, I, I know there is a lot on the table regarding uh, APNU's work in the National Assembly. Do, can the public expect anything coming from David Granger and the Partnership for National Unity? Probably maybe regards of a motion to address suicide, or if not that, is there any intention for you to reach out to government to ad address this issue? We have been very dissatisfied in APNU uh, over the responsiveness of government, the executive branch, to our motions. Um, there has been no official adoption of a resolution, for example, when we call for the establishment of a commission of inquiry. And that is a great disappointment because we are, when uh, something is passed in the National Assembly, when a motion is passed before it becomes a resolution, it is passed by majority, the minority can't pass a motion. So we are very disappointed that the administration, the executive branch has not been setting up these um, commissions and uh, for that reason, we're reluctant to go that way again, but something must be done. Uh, I do believe that there is a little window of opportunity because we have brought a motion about maritime deaths, and we noticed afterwards, although the commission wasn't set up, there has been some action on the part of MARAD, the Maritime Administration Department, and the Ministry of Public Works to tighten up, to implement stiffer measures to uh, ensure that there's safety on the waterways. So even though the Commission of Inquiry is not actually convened, we do feel that there is uh, an opportunity for the government to take corrective action. And we are definitely going to bring this matter before the National Assembly, whether it comes as a motion or not. We expect the government is going to have to, going to be, we are going to call on the government to explain what the National um, Security Prevention Committee is doing and how its um, work could be improved. Okay, thank you very much, sir. This has been another
program of the public interest. I am Alaika Ramsey. We were discussing the suicide rate in Guyana. Thanks for watching.